ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've been a busy, busy bee in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I finally decided what I was going to do with uh, my car and what kind of motor or engine I was going to put in into it. Uh, it is actually going to be big block. I actually have two of them sitting here. And you guys are probably wondering why the hell do I have two 440s? And mind you, the two 440 blocks uh, that I got from a guy off of one of the forums that I'm a part of. Uh, the reason why I got two 440s is because it came with all pretty much heads, cam, and everything on one, and forged pistons on the other, on this one over here. Uh, this one actually is a forged crank, and the other one was a cast crank. So what I'm eventually going to be doing is I'm going to put a forged crank and the forged pistons all in one motor. I originally just wanted to get one motor, but the uh, the gentleman wanted to get rid of both of them at the same time. So I was figuring, why not? You know, if it's a good deal, it's a good deal, and I got them for a great deal. Uh, but that was not the only thing or things I got for the car. It also came with an Elderbrock Torker one intake uh, there, and he gave me an extra set of pistons right there. Now, that is not all. Come over here, and you guys will see that I have plenty of parts here. All right, so one motor came with a Mopar Purple Cam. Um, I measured the lobes on it. It was around a 470 lift on both intake and exhaust sides, uh, and 906 uh, HP heads. Uh, how you actually figure that out is normally with uh, the 906 heads that were HP or not HP, the HP heads actually came with extra springs that are built inside uh, on, the, on the valve train here. So I also got those with the motors. A SFI flex plate right here. SFI spec 29.1. That came with one of the motors. That actually think came with the cast crank motor. Uh, there's one uh, camshaft over there. And here is the second camshaft right here. That came out of the cast crank motor. Um, this cam is uh, an NA for me. I really don't know where it came from. I can't cross-reference the numbers off of the cam at all, I can't find it anywhere, but it has a bigger lift than the Mopar Purple Shaft Cam. Uh, all these pistons you see here, yes, you will count 16 sitting here. Uh, one set of these came, these are normal uh, sized pistons other than the bore. Both motors are 0 .040 overbore on both the blocks. And these actually go down farther deeper than uh, the other pistons that I have, which are these. As you actually look really closely, these pistons sit a lot higher than those pistons. That's the reason why. These are 10 0 to 1 compression pistons. Uh, these are a little taller skirt. They actually go up a little higher than uh, your typical uh, a piston that goes into the motor. So these set of pistons were probably like an eight and a half to one compression piston, and these are like a ten half to one or ten to one compression. Just depends on the static compression that comes from those heads sitting over there. Uh, it looks like these rods. I'm not for sure if these rods are actually stronger than the cast ones. They look. A little thicker than these ones do and that's the only thing I can really tell right now the caps are a little thicker up here a little bit so I think these are stronger rods they might be six pack rods of a six pack motor compared to a typical um, low compression motor so these are actually all good um, two of these pistons here the top rings actually uh, snapped on two of the pistons when I took them out so I will have to get two new rings for these, but all the rings on these look really good on these on these pistons here, and I'll be using these pistons uh, here than these. These will be like my backups for the second motor. Um, 
And that is not all, folks, really. <laughs> and yes, I should have probably took some videos of me actually taking apart the motors. That probably would have helped a little bit, but oh well. Uh, it is what it is. I got really excited. I started taking it apart until I forgot the video. But that is not the only thing I got that day I got these motors. I also got a rear end. Uh, this is an eight and three quarter rear end. The, the car that uh, stock rear end that's in the car right now is a seven and a quarter and they are made like glass. Uh, these 440s would just snap and break them like crazy. And it's actually pretty amazing that I actually found the same guy had this there. It's an eight and three quarter out of an A body car, which this one is. So the measurements measure up perfect. There's no cutting on the tubes at all. So it literally will go right in, bolt right in, right onto the perches. Uh, I will be doing a lot of work on this. It is pretty rusted inside and out. So I will have to do like a rust converter on the inside of it. Um, clean it all up and pretty. Um, probably... In the next couple days, I'll start doing that. Uh, other than that, it also came with some drums. I probably will not be using, uh, but they came with them. So go on with that. Uh, it came with the axles. They're actually pretty thick axles too for for what this car is. Uh, this is still a small bolt pattern compared to the big bolt pattern that you're supposed to get for better wheel packages and stuff that you can get but it also came with the center section. Now, the center section here, if you might see, it actually comes with a spool type of center section and not say like a true lock or a Detroit locker or something like that. Uh, so that means with this right here, the, the both the wheels will be locked at all times, which is great for drag racing reasons. Um, I've heard people actually using these even on their daily drivers, just don't drive your car crazy in the rain. Otherwise, you'll spin out like crazy. Uh, I already checked the valve lash on the, or not the valve lash, but the lash themselves on the gear set is perfect. Uh, so I really don't have to rebuild, rebuild this at all. The gears that are in this is a 488 gear. So this car is going to be really freaking snappy. Looking forward to that. Uh, I will probably have to buy a, uh, a new pinion yoke. I've never seen one like this type. This might, this intersection might have came out like a rock crawler or something like that. Um, so I will have to get a, a, a new pinion yoke for this, which is about 80 bucks or so, which is fine. I'll probably buy a forged one from Yukon Gear or, uh, or probably from Strange or Moser or something like that. But very, very, very strong casing. This is a 489 case, which is one of the strongest cases you can get for an 8 and 3 quarter rear end. Um, so this should be able to hold up to. I mean, easily 600 horsepower, 700 horsepower from this this unit right here, uh, which the car is not probably going to go that high. Um, my plan with the the motors and the 440s right here, they're probably maybe 450 to 500. Uh, I know this one right here; it's already been built up to 10 half to one compression. So I'll probably be rebuilding this one first, maybe even with the cast crank, because it looked like the crank and the pistons were weighted together for a blueprint uh, style, uh, to make sure they were perfectly weighted, perfectly balanced, and whatnot. So it would be pointless for me for right now if to swap the forged crank over to, to this motor, and I had to do all kinds of machine work to make it all work. Um, I will have to get a dial gauge out and make sure if this actually has the same uh, overall thickness on the journals to the one that was on this one. Now the one over where I'm missing over here, the cast crank is actually sitting right here. This is the one where the 10 to half to one compression uh, pistons came out of, this crank right here. Uh, the, the, I mean, it looks really clean on all this. I mean, there's really no heat marks or scratch marks or anything that maybe was catastrophic when these motors got done. Um, here is actually some of the bearings. This was the number three uh, main cap bearing, and it actually is really smooth on some of these. This has a little score mark, but probably because I was stacking them. 
I probably will replace the bearings anyways just to be safe. Probably put some clavite bearings or something like that into it. Uh, but other than that, there's a timing chain cover that came on one of the motors. Uh, there's another timing chain cover off the other motor somewhere. I don't remember exactly where it's at, but anywho. I just figured I'd let you guys know uh, an update on where the car is at. Uh, I'm really excited, and from here on out, I'll slowly start working on it and videoing it. Uh, maybe I'll do a build series on the motor that I'll be building, and uh, build the first startup and whatnot with the video on, so you guys can actually hear it the first time I hear it start up, which is going to be insane, because this car was originally a Slant 6 car, going from Slant 6 to a 440 is, is crazy.